Hi, this is Charlie from Path of the Bee. Today we're going to continue working on our bee loader. This will be part three in the series of, of my progress. So, I finished up the box for the electrical system in the last video. Um, I decided that with all the wires and stuff, I'm going to have to move this around. I decided to unhook all that. I'll finish wiring that all in once, once I'm done. My focus today is going to be on my hinge system here on this end. And I've thought a few different things. I was going to use some pipe and pins and different stuff. But what I, what I kind of decided to do is, is I've got a piece of 3 16 plate steel here, 6 inches wide. I'll cut a 6 inch square out of it. This tube is 6 inches. So I'll make a square, I'll weld it on the end. And then I worked on a, a bale fork for my hay farm for the front of my tractor. So I bought a three-point uh, piece, and I cut these ears off of it. So I've got four of these really nice, heavy-duty ears that are all the same length. And I'm going to use those for the hinge pivot on this end. And then I've also decided that with that hanging on there, it needs some way to you know reduce friction a little bit. Here I have a piece of brass bar stock, and with whatever space is left between the fork here and the inner ears, I'm going to cut a I'm going to cut a washer here and bore a hole in it for a for a thrust washer out of brass. I'm going to use I found this uh, piece of uh, kind of shafting here that used to be a handle off of something, and it's you know, piece of stock I can use. I'll turn this down to the right dimension, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna put some holes in it and stuff, so I can add grease fittings, so I can grease that hinge also. Um, and that's gonna be kind of kind of where I get going. The first thing I'll do is I'll start on this square plate on the end of the on the end of the, the yellow tube. So I'm gonna use the bandsaw here to go ahead and. Uh, and cut this plate nice and square. Okay, so I've got this rusty plate mounted up in the vise here. I'm gonna clean this rust and scale off of it with my flat disc. Okay, so I got my plate shined up. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove the paint from around here and get this ready to, to weld on. Okay, so what I just did was I, I cleaned the end of the tube off, polished it all up nice and ready to weld my plate on. I'm going to do that right here on the table. What I discovered was fortunately that this thickness of this ring here is the same thickness as my table. So I bolted a, or clamped a piece of angle iron here underneath the table so this sets flatly on it, kind of registers it, and then the tube's sitting flat on the table. That will allow me put my plate here and it'll be straight up and down welded on. Okay, also the ears that I have, I've decided that I'm going to go ahead and weld this plate on first and then attach the ears by putting a pin in through them to keep everything aligned up the way it needs to be. So that's kind of the next step. I will, uh, I'll get this welded on and then I'll get these ears cleaned up and uh, we'll go ahead and, and machine down the shaft. Okay, so I just ran into a little bit of a problem. I, I set this plate up here and I used my, my 90 degree magnet to stick it to the table and the plate hold it here on the end and what I have is, is a huge gap there. Let me move the camera, I'll show you. Okay, so you can see this gap here is, is significant. It's, it's much greater than I want to try and fill. So the next step is to try and uh, cut the end of that tube square so I'll take uh, you know a quarter of an inch off of it with the bandsaw see if I can get it squared up okay so here's my setup I've uh, I've got this as close to square as I can possibly get it I've used a, a roller stand here that is adjusted exactly the right height to where I have contact here in the back contact in the front and I'm up tight nicely against my back piece here it's as close to 90 as I'm going to get, so I'm going to go ahead and, and cut it off. 
Okay, so after my cut, you can see it fits way better. I'll go ahead and weld this on, and uh, I'll do that off camera. I'll use a wire feed welder and, and, and weld it completely all the way around. Okay, so I went ahead and welded this up off camera, and I also cleaned all the, the ears up, um, the four tabs that we've got, so they're, they'll be ready to weld on. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the shaft in the lathe, and I'm going to turn it down to 7 eighths. That's how big this hole is here, and then, uh, and then we'll be ready to go on that. So I'll meet you at the lathe. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and center drill this, this piece of shaft. If you notice that it had been turned, a little shoulder had been turned on it prior to me putting it in here, and it was off center. So what I'm going to do is I, I've got it chucked up as far this way as I can off of a known good surface. I'll center drill it here, and then when I get ready to turn it, I'll stretch it further out, and, and we'll be good. So first thing I'm going to do is put a little drop of cutting fluid on my center drill. We'll go ahead and start this up. I want to go in about half to two-thirds of the width of that shoulder on, on the center drill to get a nice good rest for, for, my, for my live center. So I'm using the auto feed uh, system on here. We'll just make a few passes and get down to the right diameter. Okay, so I got it turned to 7 eighths. I've got a couple of flaws in it. It's not exactly perfect, but it it's definitely will function as an excellent pivot pin. So I'll peel it out of here and we'll continue on. Okay, so I went ahead and cleaned up all the paint off of the off of the ears. Uh, they're gonna end up, you know, pivoting on each other and so I decided I definitely needed to remove that. So this is 90 degrees to my table, and uh, this underneath ear is going to fit underneath. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this centered up right here, 90 degrees, perfect to this plate. I'm going to uh, tack weld this on real well, and then I'm going to work at welding each side back and forth to keep it from from the weld from pulling it out of square. So I'm going to pay very close attention to the square as I as I weld this ear in here. Once I've got this one welded in, um, this is flat, I'll grind this little bump off from the other weld. I'll flip it over, I'll do the same thing. We'll get these ears welded on. Okay, so I've got the ears welded on and obviously I have a weld bead on top here. My plan is to, you know, mount this this ear into my stick and then it, will, it will pivot around. I'm going to run into that so I can either grind it off but I feel that that might make it a little bit weaker so what I'm going to do is I plan on putting a little brass washer in here you know to help as a bearing surface and so I'm just going to cut a slice of this inch and a half uh, brass stock off and then bore a hole in it seven eighths and that will give me the height that I need then what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to set up the, the connected pieces that are going to eventually connect to the stick and weld the ears to them. And then I'll figure out the spacing to get the stick centered. So that's kind of work a little bit backwards there, but that's how I'm going to do it. So first things first, I'll go ahead and make my little washer. Okay, here's my setup. I'll go ahead and uh, start the machine up. Okay, so here's, here's my washer that I cut. If you'll notice, there's some ridges in it from, from the bandsaw marks. I'm going to leave those in in hopes that, you know, they provide a little bit of room for the grease to kind of get in there. I will take this burr off. And, and then just bore a 7 8 hole in it. Okay, let's give this a whirl. Let's try and drill our pilot hole. Okay, and now for the 7 8 Okay, 
Okay, so here's our here's our little uh, thrust washer that we built. You can see it's going to go in there like that, and then our pin's going to come in here. And that will allow enough room for that to clear everything as as we go around. I have this two by two stuff stock here. I'm going to weld it here to, and then that will end up with some spacers being welded to the stick. So it's looking like about where I have it set right now it is going to work out about perfect. So I'll check into this a little bit more and let you know. Okay, so I got my ears welded on and uh, got this set up now, how I like it, how I want it. Everything is straight, looks good. And so I've decided that this is the distance I want to go with, so I'm going to cut this off right here where I made the mark on the bandsaw, and then uh, and then I'll go ahead and, and weld this whole setup together. Okay, so I've got this uh, hooked onto the table here with the clamp, and uh, like I said before, I think that this is where I'm going to hook my pivot at. So I'm going to take the arm here, and I'm going to find some assistance and I'm going to get it pinned in the end here and then we'll test out the swivel to see how it works. Okay so I've got this pinned in here nicely um, and uh, I was able to actually sit on the winch out here. Things are holding it holding together nice. It does have a little bit of sprawling in it but it still moves nice. Now the way I've got it bolted to the table I can't go sideways with it at the moment but uh, I think, I think we've got something here. Okay, so the test of our hinge works real great. I still have work to do to the pin. I'm going to machine some grooves in it so I can get some grease into this joint up top and probably put some in the one down below. Um, so there'll be a grease fitting on top and bottom that opens up in the center of these seams. Okay, so in the next video, I'm thinking about I better start working on this center hinge pivot. Um, I have an idea. I scrapped out an old plow a long time ago. has some really strong heavy-duty bearings in it, and I saved the, in the, the, the following wheel. And so I think I might try and use that. I'll bring that in tomorrow, and we'll tear it apart and see if it's suitable. It, might really need to go to the scrapyard. We'll take a look at that and see what we think. Um, right now, that's that's what I'm, uh, what direction I'm leaning. So we'll have to build a cradle for this to set in here, where it's going to mount in the middle, and then we need to be thinking about the battery box for the back. So um, for the upright, holding it up straight up in the air, I have another piece of this tubing. It's red instead of yellow, but it'll, it's the exact same stuff straight up so we can determine our height. Um, I can't put it together in my shop here because I don't have enough ceiling space to get it out. So I'll have to build this in pieces, assemble it outside. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have questions or comments, please leave them down below. And uh, we'll catch you next time.